Hello guys, welcome to another exciting video today. We're gonna be diving in into, I'll say newer makeup releases. Um, they're not that old by any means. And it is Natasha Denona I Need In It Palette and Pat McGrath Sunlit Seduction Palette. And these are the palettes that I haven't used that much, but I did wanted to use them today for various reasons, mainly because I wanted to give them kind of a, another chance to review them after I've tried them for a, maybe a couple of times. Because sometimes what happens, like you have first impressions, but I do love for that first impressions to come down and just to kind of sleep over it and then do a couple of more looks to really see what is going on um, when it comes to formulation, color story and everything else. Anyways, I know this is not the most, in my opinion, not the most spectacular, in-depth um, look that I've created today. It is like, I will say much more approachable, wearable look. I just wanna share the process with you and see you at my final thought. First, I'm going to start with the Mothership 11 palette. The thing here is that we do have only three mattes, um, which makes me really limited on the look that I can create when it comes to mattes specific to this palette. Just going to check if my base is blended. Okay, so today's mainly focus will be on the eyeshadows itself, not the bases or anything else. So I'm just gonna take my blending brushes and I will start with the lightest one and it's it's pretty pink color or at least it looks even more pink on me. And I'm gonna go start with this shade right here. But one of the things that I do really love and really do appreciate when it comes to mothership palette is that those eyeshadows you guys are really really pigmented like they grab pigment instantly and if the quality is good meaning you won't struggle with the blending that means like that promises amazing amazing result now you can see just by tapping a little bit what i did get from this palette i also went quite randomly but you know what, I will take my time and just spread it a little bit. And now while I'm doing this, I just wanted to, for the comparison's sake, right away go with Natasha's um, palette so that you can see the difference one step at the same time where I'm creating something. Because it's a bit different than when I'm uh, when I do one eye completely and then the other one and you can see how easily this is blending I'm not even trying you know what's funny I'm not even trying to be super precise right here which at the end like it is important and I will make this like really nicely blended and also I will go once again with this shade and the good thing is I don't have fallout almost nothing if any I'm taking my time Trying to blend this really nicely. And I'm gonna take bigger blending brush just to tap the product. And one thing I realized, like this one, it works really nicely, like even when I tap it right now, like when I wanted to blend it. But of course you can use circle emojis to blend it. But since uh, my second brush has been already like having a lot of pigment on it, um, it was just for the blending. I still do want to diffuse everything and just slightly, slightly go with the another clean blending brush. Now I want to go in with the I Need A Nude palette. Again, this is one of those palettes that I don't think I have reached enough for uh, since I've purchased them. I thought this is going to be one of the most exciting palettes. Ended up not using it that much. You know what, now when I think about it, unfortunately not something that gave me that much inspiration, unfortunately, that's what I'm thinking. Also one thing that I realized that these mattes, like we do have more, um, more of choices when it comes to mattes. You know what I realized is that these mattes are kind of a, compressed really hard in a pan not usually something i am familiar when it comes to natasha's formula i'm going to really pack that eyeshadow again this is shade width as you can see i'm not having issues while using this color I don't think this one is the most flattering on me. I think this shade in particular would look so much better on blue eyes, but I'm going to mix 
some other shades so i think it's going to be fine okay the formulation is definitely different we take a clean brush and i will start to apply it i feel at the moment like with this one i do need to put a little bit more effort maybe than on this one because they they do go differently and again not something that i'm used to natasha's formula but i do feel like these mattes are kind of uh, really hard pressed textures and i'm not quite sure why is that but at the end of the day as you can see right here i am not having issues with the blend that's when it comes to quality when it comes to color that is going to be your personal preference like i said i don't see this color fluttering my brown eyes but rather being really great on more blue eyes than brown also in this case i felt like i needed a little bit more um, of a product to really grab the pigment while in pads this mothership palette it's kind of i just touch it and the pigment is there this one is much more diffused than this one um i'll see if i can go another another layer but that being said this shade is a bit lighter than this one that i've used here like in a depth this one is a little bit more um lighter okay now when it comes to mothership i will i'm really limited like i said with the mattes so i'm going to go with a second matte shade so these are shades or maybe they look a bit closer in a pen than on my eyelid you'll see now what i mean like this one it does get a pretty pretty much darker than i would think it is going to be considering how this and this one look in a pan also one thing i realized with this um eyeshadows is how they kind of oxidize did you oxidize like when i apply it now differently kind of a lighter than now once i'm going to blend them let me just now take a blending brush and i'm just going to diffuse okay here i do need to spend a little bit more time and blend it yeah i didn't expect for this one to be that deep i thought they're going to be kind of a much more similar in depth still going with the same shade i guess it's going to take me a little bit more time to blend everything the way i want it. i'm just going to leave it like this for now so this is how the second color looks like it's really intense like when i think about it um now i want to go with the second shade from the Natasha Denona, which is going to be VAG. Take the excess off and let's see. This should be like really great comb, but this is going to be much more toned down. Where this one pulls more like kind of a reddish undertone, this one is much more neutral. Or as the palette says, it's a more on a nude side. With a smaller brush, I'm adding more product in my crease. Let's see the real depth of this eyeshadow i think this is the deepest that it will transfer when it comes to depth take the clean brush and now you can see in opacity how this one is lighter this one is a bit deeper and for just for the comparison those two shades wit and wag and these two lighter mattes from the pat mcgrath palette well let me apply wag like even more what i want to do next is to take the deepest matte shade and i will take a smaller brush which i usually do whenever i'm creating something with the deeper shades as well and that one goes right wow you can see the pigment grabbing <laughs> like crazy mm-hmm and i work with a really small brushes i know this um pigment will diffuse now once i blend it but i can always go back and pack more which is good so see how it starts to diffuse once i blend it mm -hmm. i'll try not to touch the rest and see this is what i talk about like when i applied it kind of goes like lighter but now when i blend it it's kind of going to oxidize and be darker interesting sometimes the shades they don't look completely same on your eyes as they do in a pen and i also do have a bit of a fallout at this moment as you can see i'm gonna go and use silhouette shade 
from Natasha Denona, which when I um, think about these two shades, I don't have nothing deeper than this before this one. The only thing I think will work before is tender, but since I applied here only three matte eyeshadows, so I'm gonna do the same here. But yeah, well, this is two. You know what, let me try to apply this one. If it's not going to work, I can always add the shade in between. I'm going in with a little bit of tender shade. I really do need that transition. Um, I can make this work, it would just take me so long. But not even a tender is like the perfect shade or depth that I would need, that I would like for this. But you know what, it's blending okay and it's going to be a nice transition before the darkest shade. I'll just take my time to blend it and obviously I will lose this like kind of uh, salmon shade that I have here. Yeah, I feel like now it is time for silhouette. Mm, and this shade is actually pretty good if you even want to make your eyeliner or smudged liner. This will be really great. It is so... it is deep color. At the same time, it is really like neutral. So I think a lot of you will like this specific shade for that. Yeah, glam smudged. So now this gave me an idea, like a glam smudged deep brown eyeliner yeah now we're going to move to these special shades honestly besides this one red one i was super excited when i saw on launch of this palette about the red one i ended up loving the rest of them so much the, this one i am i had so many issues using that one unfortunately it's it's a totally different story for itself which i reviewed already on my channel but what I wanted to do is to use this shade right here. Oh, this is beautiful. And this one is not so yellow as it can maybe show up on camera. And these two work perfectly together. Um, I'll say that the Pat McGrath special shades, like besides the multi-chromes that do certain magic on the eye, these shades are one of the best things I have ever tried. These are really, really, really like super special. I'm going in with my finger. It already looks so good. I'm not going even to cut my crease. I'm just gonna go directly. Can you see it here on the camera? It does have that yellow undertone. That's the reason why the second shade will look gorgeous on top of this. Just gonna go with my flat brush. I'm not using this one in my inner corner. The reason for that is because I'm gonna use um, the lighter shade, but so easily and so gorgeous, you guys. Now, no, I can use the same brush and this shade right here. Obviously, we do have the lighter and the lighter shade in this palette as well, but it's not a special shade. So this is the one that I love to use instead of that one, but I may just change has everything, use the lightest shade later as well. This is super rich, super creamy. These shades, you guys, are everything. I need to have some of the transition right here and I will deal with that later. Okay, right now I need to connect everything right here and I just want to stick to this more like a rosy shade. So instead, for now, I'll just stick to these two shades and what I will do, I will go back to the matte, back to the matte. I'm gonna go use this shade right here first. That will be my connection between these two. And you know what? It works just fine. Now, one thing I like to do is to enhance my crease and using this shade is exactly what I'm gonna do. So, right here, but I think it is not that deep, so I have to go a little bit. Well, a little bit with the deepest matte shade. Okay, and now for this side, but again, I have shade Mia and Ella. You know what, I'm gonna start with my inner corner and I'm going with the shade Mia. Mia is her new formula. It is more like wet looking finish, which I really, really love. And I don't think it's going to look too rosy on my skin. And this is mainly for my inner corner. And now when it comes to main color, the muse is too cold to you. Like it's a gorgeous shade. Based on today's look, I'll go with the Ella or Delilah. 
Delilah. I'm using shade Delilah. I wish one of those shimmers, since they are so close, I really, really wish we have like deeper shade in maybe this version, like Mia. I mean, it still looks pretty good. It looks great. I love the effect. And of course, now I need to connect everything and I'm going in with the shade Tender a little bit. Um, and one good thing to connect everything, I have shade Filigree, which is amazing deep shade, something I'm so happy to have, like in general, especially in this palette. Um, Cause as I always love to have light and depth in the palette, I also appreciate really deep, sparkly, glam brown shade like obviously this could be like even darker but um it is i think good enough for what i need and for the end since i lost a little bit of my liner i'm going just back with a silhouette now for my lower lash line i'm thinking i want to keep it really kind of a simple and soft i don't want to go too heavy so i'm gonna go in first with this medium like deep shade but like i said i want to keep it more on a soft side definitely mm, take my bullet brush for this and now when i think about it i do want to smudge this even more like i don't know i just like the fact how this looks without the lower lash line today so instead i'm just gonna go a little bit on my lash line like so for my inner for my inner corner just going to pop a little bit of this light and this will be my transitional shade like just to have something to cover for everything to be covered now on this side i want to use back shade and i also would love to give it more on a lighter side of a color story for today just to smudge that for the light, I do have fair shade right here. Like this is not perfect light shade uh, for lighting up. I still can use this one almost as a transitional shade, but it is going to do job today. Really good. And then I want to go with Mia because that is what I do have in my inner corner and I want it to match. Okay. Um, I will apply some false lashes and I will see what I do, what I have. And if I want to apply more of a liner, just to make like sharper liner but i don't think i would and i will be right back as we all know when it comes to pat mcgrath in general when it comes to this palette what happened was there were so many reactions saying because the newer mothership was coming out people hoping it's not gonna be another pink palette and everybody's like oh my god it's another repetitive kind of a color story which for me i get more use out of it in a sense that it's not just like another pink palette i'll um, explain later what i think about it but then when it comes to natasha denona i need a nude palette everybody was super super i'll say positive and don't get me wrong this is still palette that i'll say that the quality wise and color story wise i still can get a um, use out of it but i don't see this as something that is like super super necessary or something i cannot work without so the certain colors in here are beautiful colors that I love. But when I thought, I don't know why, for whatever reason, when I thought of I need a nude palette initially, I thought oh, just all the browns, but it's not the case. Like browns are different than nude, but for me just to seeing a nude palette was, in my head was lean, everybody's going to lean more towards like a brown color story, which obviously it is not. But when it comes to certain browns, they're so, so, so neutral that some of these came too close in a color range within themselves that now I wish we have a different color story within this idea uh, when it comes to this palette that she released. Now, let me know your thoughts about this palette in particular, if you tried it, if you have it. Now, first and foremost, like, okay, this is gonna sound a bit crazy, but let's forget about the color story. Let's just talk mainly first about the formulation. When it comes to shadow performances, I'll say that Natasha's eyeshadows in this particular case, that's not always how it happens, but in this particular case, I'll say that especially mattes are really hardly pressed. Um, so if you are going to swatch them with your fingers, you can see how like they are kind of a hard as they eyeshadows. From the mothership, they are much more softer and they are grabbing pigment instantly. Um, 
I feel like this palette compared to this one, you have to build this one a bit more, put like a little bit more effort when it comes to blending compared to this one. This one feels like a little bit more powdery texture. And I'll say this one is, again, for whatever reason, this particular is easier to work with when it comes to Natasha. I'm not saying it's, it's hard palette to work with, but on a scale, it's harder than when it comes to formulation than this one. Also, what we do have in this are these beautiful special shades besides this red one, because unfortunately this was disappointment in this palette when it comes to performance and automatically when it comes to performance, it is also not good when it comes to color story because it's not performing well and it's not what I initially thought it's going to be. I was super excited about this one. It is good palette, good quality. Now the color story may be something that you as an indi individual are maybe, for example, having a lot of these colors and it, for you may be repetitive. Um, I do enjoy it quite, especially, especially these special shades right here, which I think the formulation is something really, really worth your money because this is like, this is expensive palette. And if you can always um, suggest if you're not in a rush to buy these type of a palette whenever she runs a sale. And I think just a couple of days ago, I even saw 30% of all of the motherships Supposedly, I don't know if this one in particular was on a sale as well, um, where Natasha, of course, like smaller pants, more possibilities, but in this particular, we don't have that much variety, I'll say. Like we can divide this into this more, like really like new skin tone shades and then these kind of a salmon shades, two different color stories and uh, more eyeshadows. But the price is, it's a less more expensive than the Mothership, of course. I do love both of these packagings. They are my favorite. Uh, Mothership is, yeah, it's really heavy, um, but for maintenance, I, I really appreciate it. It's like, they get from the makeup artist's point of view, they get a lot, like when it comes to practicality and everything, I really have to say that is something that I'm really, really enjoying. One thing that I also love that you can take out um, the eyeshadows, make your own eyeshadow palette or customize or whatever you want. That is something really convenient as well. To wrap this up, I think that in this particular palette, I do have a couple of shades that I really do personally love and enjoy. But in general, this palette did not fulfill what I had envisioned when I initially saw the promo photos of this palette and that's one of the reasons probably why I'm not reaching that much for this palette. Like here and there, if I'm especially if I'm doing glam look, I think um, you can do um, really good stuff. Also, like we do have some, for, exa for example, Silhouette Shade is a beautiful, beautiful deep brown shade you can use for so many occasions and it is so nice and glamorous and if you are into like more cool toned nude eyeshadow color story you really might love and enjoy this one now mothership is something that is color wise it is a bit specific both of these look gorgeous and i'll say also that when it comes to like this particular comparison as well the way the mothership eyeshadows right here grab onto the brush and onto the skin it is a little bit more the colors have a tiny bit more punch than this side and i also felt like within the application this was a bit easier and quicker than this side because i really did have to pay attention so in general when i combine everything together um what i like and i don't like i i think i enjoy this one a little bit more than this one which is quite surprising for me considering everything that i initially thought um, uh, when i was thinking about these two palettes let me know in the comment section down below if you tried any of these and what you think about the eyeshadow quality. And one last thing that I have to say in general when it comes to these two brands, like what I like about Natasha, if we talk about minis, if we talk about midi size palette, she is not only consistent, she is upgrading all the time. And that is a big plus. Where unfortunately what happened with the Pat McGrath, I love her Mothership palettes, but big, <laughs> but in the different segment of her releases, I recently bought the whole Bijou collection and we had a mix of different 
different quality like we had cheaper products for quality that was downside and I cannot compare it to this and when you try this and then you use other mothership from for example holiday mothership that it was or any of um, five pan eyeshadow palettes which are okay but none of them are comparable to this honestly I've got a little bit sad because I wish like she keeps on doing this quality makeup and on that other part we are so downsized on the packaging and on the quality and yes you do get like good decent product but again when you compare it to this one you get disappointed in performance in everything else so that's one thing that i can't kind of forget a little bit like sad when i thought about the whole collection was it worth it at the end i don't think it was like there are a couple of things i really enjoyed in the collection but unfortunately those big mothership palettes like they just didn't fulfill what i hope they would so i am so patiently waiting for another mothership to see what is she going to come up with hopefully it's gonna be a specific color story either if it's blue, green, purple, anything like, but I would love for it to be a specific. Anyways, um, thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. Let me know your thoughts as always in the comment section down below and I will see you in my next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.